This is a story about me and some friends having a very scary night on the 4th of July weekend. Okay, so like I said, it was coming up on the 4th of July weekend, and my friend Justin invited me to come over to his house to shoot off and watch some fireworks with him and his folks. Since me and my parents didn't have anything going on, I told him yeah, that'd be cool and decided to go over to his place on the 4th of July. So when the night finally came, I went over to his house with him, his sister Natalie, his parents, and a few more of our friends, Chelsea, Ethan, Kelly, and Tara. We all had a blast watching the fireworks go off, and after a while, when the fireworks were over, it was probably about one or two in the morning, none of us was tired yet, and we all talked amongst ourselves to see what we should do. Eventually, we all just agreed on the idea of driving around town, listening to music, while watching some of the other people still shooting fireworks off. We all got in my truck and started driving around town for a little while, watching all the other fireworks around the neighborhood. After driving around for a bit, I told Justin that we should take everybody down to that old rickety bridge that was at the end of that dark dirt road me and him found a few weeks back while driving around just the two of us. He laughed and said, yeah, let's do it. So we made our way to that dirt road, turned onto it, and began driving all the way down to the old bridge. One of the girls asked us after driving on the dirt road for a few minutes where we were going. I smiled and told them we have a surprise for all of them. She didn't look very excited but said okay. As we eventually got closer to the bridge, I slowed down and turned my headlights off. Now, the story with this bridge, it's just an old town legend, or just an old wives tale if you want to put it that way. But apparently, if you park your vehicle in the middle of the bridge and leave the headlights off, then after sitting there for a few minutes, the ghost of somebody who died there long ago will turn your vehicle off and not allow you to get out. They will appear at one of your windows looking right at you, and after a few seconds of watching you, they will disappear and push your vehicle across the other end of the bridge, down the hill, into the river. We thought messing with everybody would be just a good little laugh, so I parked the truck in the middle of the bridge and we all sat there for a few minutes. One of the girls asked us, where's the surprise at? Just as I was about to laugh and tell them the old legend, and then turn the vehicle's lights back on and leave, the weird and unexpected did happen. My truck suddenly turned off. And I was surprised by this. I looked at Justin, and he was equally surprised. I thought this was very strange, and so I tried turning the truck back on. And after a few tries, I got lucky and the truck started back up. I didn't know what happened, but I didn't want to stick around to find out if any more of the story was going to come true. So I turned the headlights back on, put the truck in reverse, and backed up next to the dirt road. Just as I was putting the truck in drive, and was getting ready to leave there, one of the girls screamed. I put my foot on the brake and turned to look at the girl and asked her what was wrong and I noticed she was looking out the window and said that someone was standing on the bridge watching us. I looked over at the bridge and my heart sank. Indeed, there was someone standing there looking right at us. But it was very weird. I couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman and you couldn't make out any other features because it was just a tall dark silhouette. But they were just standing there watching us. Then all of a sudden, after a few seconds, they started coming towards us. And I don't mean just walking. They were moving at a running kind of speed. I quickly let my foot off the brake and gassed down the dirt road from which we came. And looked in the rearview mirror to see the figure just stopped at the edge of the road watching us drive away. We were all freaked out and decided that this was enough for one night and went back to Justin's house for a bit. We sit in the living room talking about what just happened. And after a few minutes, the girls decided to go to bed. So me, Justin, and Ethan all did the same. 
I said my goodbyes and went home. Justin called me a few days later and told me to check the news. When I turned it on, I found out that a group of friends, just like us, died in their car, unable to get out, in the river at the bottom of the bridge. The same one we were at just a few nights ago.